Hey guys, today in the shop we got our new project 6 liter in and uh, today we're going to be talking about no starts. Stay tuned. So it's no secret, if you're, uh, if you're here watching this video, you either have a no stock condition right now or you've experienced it in the past or you're just checking out the video to try to gain some more knowledge, but it's, uh, it's a pretty common thing to have a no start on a 6 liter. Um, and often, these no starts go improperly diagnosed and people put a ton of money into the trucks and still have a no start. So the goal of today's video is to go over some of the scenarios which can cause a no start. Um, I'll kind of lead you in the right direction on the proper diagnostics of each individual scenario. I already have a few pretty detailed videos about some of the specific no start conditions. So what I'll do is when we get to that point, I will direct you down to a link and I'll have a link in the description of videos that I've already made. Um, if I haven't made a video about a specific no start condition, it will be coming in the future. But what I really want to do is give an overview of how to get yourself in the right direction. What kind of no start is it? Is it a high pressure oil leak issue? Is it a fuel system issue? Is it a FICM issue? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Definitely not gonna be a completely exhaustive video going over every single possibility because there's always the curveball wiring issues and everything that could be going on, but all the real common stuff that you're gonna to experience, today we're gonna to cover it. So to start off, um, we could be talking about several issues here. Now there's a no crank, no start, and there's a crank, no start. Uh, I'm not getting in, gonna get into the no crank, no starts today. I'm gonna get into the crank, no start. So the truck turns over, but it just won't fire up. Um, so first things first, before you do anything on one of these trucks, if you have a crank, no start, check to make sure you have fuel in the tank and check to make sure you have oil in the oil pan. Um, obviously, goes without saying, if you have no fuel, it's not gonna run. And pretty common for gauge failures on these things, sending unit failures. So Make sure you have fuel. Uh, as far as oil goes, if you don't know already, these use a high pressure oil system. So the high pressure oil is used to actuate the injectors. Now, the high pressure oil system is fed by the low pressure oil system. So if you don't have oil in the oil pan or it's kind of low and it's getting aerated, you're never gonna build low pressure oil enough to feed the high pressure oil system. So start there, make sure you have good clean oil in the truck and then we'll move on to the next step. Once you've verified that, um, the next thing you want to really make sure is, is the truck cranking fast enough? So you don't want to go into this with dead batteries or you don't want to be, you know, you were just on the side of the highway and you were cranking it, cranking it, cranking it, trying to get it to start. You get it towed back to your house or your shop and trying to get it to fire up and the batteries are dead. It's, it's not going to get you anywhere. Make sure the batteries are fully charged. If you can't get them to take a charge, just throw a set of batteries in there. It's not worth even continuing on with this procedure if the truck has is, is got dead batteries. Aside from that, Low voltage can cause damage to some of the other electronic components, so make sure your batteries are nice and charged up. So unfortunately for most of you, 6 liters are uh, a pretty complex computerized engine. So this isn't something that you can just turn a screw on a carburetor and try to get the thing to run right or you know swap a few things out and hope you got lucky. Um, you really need some kind of ability to scan the vehicle for codes and you really need the ability to, to look for data. Um, without those two things, the majority of the diagnosing you're gonna be doing is just by the seat of your pants and it's gonna be a waste of time. Um, that being said, there are a couple of quick things you can check before you put a scan tool to it. Uh, simple things like when you cycle the key on, do you hear the fuel pump running? Do you hear the injectors clattering? And you know the other thing too is when you crank it, do you have smoke coming out of the exhaust? So while you're cranking it, if there's smoke coming out of the exhaust, you definitely have plenty of high pressure oil, so it rules out a high pressure oil leak. And you definitely have at least some fuel. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you have good fuel pressure. We'll get into that a little bit more, but you at least know the basics of your high pressure oil system is intact, and also things like cam sensor, crank sensor, and all of your sensors are reading properly because it will not send a signal to the computer to stop firing the injectors until all of those things are right. 
My next step after going over the preliminary information and the basics is to plug a scanner in. So you're going to want to check for codes. Unfortunately with this truck it came in with completely dead batteries when I took it on so the only code in the system is a P1000 which is just that the computer hasn't gone through any self tests yet, hasn't learned, hasn't set any codes so there's nothing for me to go by as far as codes go. But you're looking for signs of injector circuit codes, uh, FICM voltage codes, you're looking for signs of ICP too low, injection control pressure, things like that. Um, if you have any of those codes, it can kind of give you a good direction to go. Keyword there, good direction. Um, you can't just go by a code and see ICP low and then put an ICP sensor in it. So once you get a code, all that's telling you is this is the direction that you need to go to diagnose. After you check the codes, next thing you don't want to do is get into the data. So this is where you're going to need either a good scanner or if you don't have the luxury of, a, of getting a good scanner, um, you can always get a monitor like a live wire or a scan gauge or even there's a few good Android apps that you can get. Um, I'll try to put a couple of links in the description to some diagnostic tools that you can use that are fairly affordable and I'll put a little bit of range in there. So it goes from anything from, uh, you know, you're only going to use it once and hopefully you never need this again to I plan on working on my truck and my French trucks a few times and this is kind of the direction I want to go with it. Once you get looking into the data, the, the first thing I usually check is RPM. So turn the key on, crank it, watch to make sure you have crank and RPM. Uh, you really need somewhere in the 150 RPM range, give or take a little bit, but you really don't want to see anything less than that. If it starts getting down below that, it's probably cranking too slow. You'll hear it. The truck will just kind of labor as it's cranking over. If you don't have enough RPM, especially in the colder months, these things definitely struggle to start. So make sure you have enough cranking RPM. After you verify cranking RPM, the next thing I go to is sync. So there's two sync data points. There's just sync and FICM sync. As you're cranking, you want both of those to say yes or okay, or some scanners will say one and zero if it doesn't have sync. So if you do have sync, that means that the cam sensor and the crank sensor are both being read and they're both being recognized as being in the right position and it's sending the signal to the computer to start. Now on the other hand, if you don't have sync, you're going to want to start looking into things like the cam sensor or the crank sensor. Now, in my experience, crank sensors on 6 liters are very, very rare to fail. Um, that doesn't say that they don't fail, because they do, but it's very rare. Uh, more commonly is a cam sensor failure. And even more common than a cam sensor failure is rust building up behind the mounting surface of the cam sensor. So if you don't have sync, the first thing you're going to want to do is start to chase the cam sensor. So what I like to do is pull the cam sensor out, inspect the block. If it's not basically bare metal behind the cam sensor, you need to clean it. Um, obviously it's a good time to put a cam sensor in at this point and my suggestion if you're going to do a cam sensor is always go with the Motocraft one. I've had a lot of bad luck with aftermarket sensors. I've had to replace quite a few that people have brought to me. They did a cam sensor and the truck was still having symptoms and it turned out to be just a cheap aftermarket cam sensor. So if you don't have sync, I suggest you go towards the cam sensor, inspect the wiring, inspect the block and that should take care of a sync issue. So next up on the list of things I check is your high pressure oil system. So this is a pretty easy thing to check uh, with the data. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to watch IPR duty cycle or IPR percentage. Um, same PID, just called a couple of different things in different scanners. You're going to want to watch ICP pressure, not voltage. Um, ICP voltage is a little bit more tricky to diagnose. The, you really need to know what each data set means in order to diagnose it that way. And most scanners and most monitors have ICP pressure built right into a, to, to a PID that gives you the exact PSI you're running. And that's much easier to diagnose. So you need at least 500 PSI to start. So when you're cranking, you're going to watch ICP pressure and see if it gets to at least 500 PSI. 
If it doesn't, you're also going to watch IPR percentage. If IPR percentage ever goes up to 85%, that's max for the IPR. Uh, so that means that the IPR is trying to fully close, which should be the highest amount of high pressure oil that the pump can produce while cranking. So if your IPR percentage is all the way up and your ICP does not reach 500 PSI, you have a high pressure oil leak or a failed high pressure oil pump or not enough low pressure oil to the high pressure system. So I do have a video about high pressure oil leaks. I'll put a link in the description below. I don't want to get any more into high pressure oil leaks, but what you can do is watch that video and it'll give you step-by-step -step diagnostics on how to, how to go through that exact problem. All right, so next on the list of data to check is FICM voltage. So you're going to want to check FICM main voltage and FICM input voltage. And what you're going to see there is your input voltage should be the same as battery voltage or very close. Now the main voltage is the voltage that is supplied to the injectors. That's the voltage that you may have heard should be right around 48 volts. Um, there can be a little bit of discrepancy there. Certain trucks will drop down to 47 and a half sometimes. Don't be scared and think you need to fix them if it drops down to that. Um, but it needs to be right around 48 volts. Any lower than say 47, it's definitely starting to fail. Um, so how you check this is bring up the data and then crank it and watch that voltage. And you'll see on a really bad FICM, the voltage will drop 43, 40, 35, and it'll just keep dropping all the way down sometimes to 15 volts. Um, and if that happens, the FICM is not sending out enough voltage to the injectors to actually actuate the spool valves. Um, you need the 48 volts to overcome the oil pressure with the spool valves. If you don't have that, uh, it, they just don't work. So you're going to want to check out your FICM, see if you have enough voltage coming out of that. If you don't, I do have a video going over how to repair those, or the other option is to get a remanufactured FICM. All right, so you've gone along and you've checked all the codes, no codes, check the data, you have nothing wrong in the data, so you've got sync, you got plenty of crank in RPM, FICM voltage is good, your high pressure oil is good. So from there, what you're going to want to start to check is things like, are the injectors stuck? Now, this still can occur in uh, warmer climates, but it's very common in cold climates that when, when the temperatures drop, your spool valve starts to stick. Now, this is what they call stiction. And what can happen is you turn the key on and the injectors don't even cycle, or only a few of them cycle. So the right way to test this is to do an injector buzz test. Um, you can just cycle the key on, listen for the injector buzzing, and then kind of see if it sounds healthy. If it doesn't sound healthy, you probably have a few injectors that are stuck. But the right way to do it is to use a scanner and do an injector buzz test or an injector electrical self-test. So what this will do is it cycles all eight of the injectors at the same time, and then it cycles each one individually. So I'm going to show a quick clip here of what that sounds like and what a healthy buzz test should be like. And, if you ha and then what I'll do is I'll unplug an injector so you can hear what it sounds like when they're missing.
Now, if it passes the buzz test, there's a couple other quick things you can check. Uh, you can definitely check fuel pressure. You need at least 45 PSI. Um, it will start on a little less than that, but it's definitely not healthy. Uh, so you, you want to check fuel pressure. And while you're at it, take a fuel sample. Pop the fuel filters out. Make sure you're not pumping just straight water through the truck. Um, that's pretty important. Good quality, clean fuel. Uh, some other odd things that can happen are things like plugged up exhaust. A little rare, but it can happen. Um, I've seen EGR valves stuck open that can cause the truck to not start because as you fire it up, it might start, stall, start, stall, or it might not start at all because it's just eating its own exhaust. Um, so there are a number of other little things that, like I said in the beginning of this video, this isn't exhaustive and it doesn't cover every single possible scenario of a no start, but I'm willing to bet 95% of you out there, at least 95%, are going to find what you're looking for by watching this video. Um, just make sure you go through, don't skip any steps, um, and you know, try not to just throw parts at these trucks. Uh, I'd really much rather see you put the money into maintaining the truck or put the money towards fixing it properly rather than just guessing and having someone say, oh, it has low high pressure oil, put an IPR in it, put an ICP sensor in it. Um, go through the proper steps. Uh, I really try hard to make my videos as uh, inclusive as possible and as detailed as possible. And some of you guys might get bored after a little while, you know, some of them are 20 minutes long, 25 minutes long, but I really try to get as much information in there for you as I can. So you go into this doing the right thing. Um, if you have any questions or if you followed all these steps and you still can't get your truck to start, feel free to comment below. Um, I try my best to reach out to every single person and respond to every single comment. And um, I, I, really, I really enjoy communicating with you guys. So uh, keep it coming. Even if you just want to say hi, drop a comment below. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. We're really close to 10,000 subscribers and uh, I'd love to push it over that mark soon. And it, you know, I'm thinking about you know doing a giveaway once I hit 10,000. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see. And the project truck definitely has some more stuff coming. This was a little bit more of a diagnostic video. I plan on trying to go back and forth with, uh, you know, like the vlog, shop talk style videos going over the project and then some diagnostic videos to keep all of you guys entertained. Um, once again, thanks for watching in the shop. I really appreciate it and see you next time.